this was going to be a film where I explain how the symptoms of U.S. Air Force personnel exactly match a Canadian study into human UAP exposure. But something amazing happened. Out of the blue, a friend of one of the airmen exposed at Rendlesham Forest said, John Burroughs likes my films and wants to talk. So I set up a Zoom call and John's answers about what happened those fateful nights is fascinating. My first question tonight to you, John, is did you did you f feel odd effects immediately? I didn't feel good afterwards. Right. But, and at one point, my, my mouth even turned white. My gums turned white. Ah, uh, right. A little bit. But um, I, I went in, went in, went into the doctors. They, they, they said I had a virus. They gave me some medicine, you know, but. The, the big holdup is my heart because I'm still to this day, uh -huh. which again is these armed chair veterans and stuff. The VA granted my disability. They granted it based off that I was injured at Rendlesham Forest. They verified that I was injured during the incident and they granted me disability based Great. on the incident. They never said what happened, including that's what happened with Kyle and McCain both. They right. said, there's no doubt something happened. There's no doubt I was injured. But I'm never going to get an answer on what it was. But maybe there were answers. The British MOD commissioned an RAF scientist to study the UK UAP reports. To answer the question, do they pose a threat to national security? This is Project Condine. It has a whole section on the Rendlesham incident and links the symptoms of the U.S. Air Force personnel to a Canadian study that looked at electromagnetic exposure and standing too close to plasma. Here is a list of its findings. Experience number one, felt dizzy or odd. Two, felt presence of someone or something. Three, tingling. Four, saw vivid images. But what struck me is this. Why would there be a study into plasma exposure unless plasma weapons were planned to be used? The UK Condine report became vital evidence for John's disability claim. When you read the published pre-Rendlesham symptoms published in the Condine report, did they resonate with you with your symptoms? The whole, re the whole report, the whole report resonated with me. Uh, and that was a really strange thing too, because right. I um didn't know about it, and I found out was it Coxford that happened. I met Pope during that early time frame, sure. and he had talked about some stuff, and he never brought up Coxford, and I found out of Coxford, so I sent him an email. I said, "What else haven't you talked about?" He says, "Well, go on the MOD website and look at Project Condine." Uh -huh. The interesting thing about Pope was he wrote about Condine, but he never talked about in the documents. It stated that we were exposed to UAP radiation. It does clearly. You saw that. It said yeah, that. We, yeah, right. So he never talked about that ever until we wrote the book. Right. And then he really didn't want to go into Condine much. Was, right. He just told me he said, "Well, that'll come out as it goes, but I have a security oath." Blah blah blah. Right. Just, no. No, I understand that, but so if I press you in this, do you think that the whatever you were exposed to is the same as the Condine report symptoms? I mean, the the specific one that that re resonated with me is time dilation and confusion and um, physical symptoms and depression. Yeah, you saw Jacques. Ballet, you saw Jacques Vallée's, um Yes. That's what he told me. Jacques Vallée is a French scientist who studied UAP exposure on humans throughout the world. Vallée claims that the human body is changed by those events, right down to our DNA level. How human DNA is affected 
after a UAP encounter is ongoing research, and they wanted John to give a sample. They approached me for my DNA, and he did an evaluation on me. He wanted my DNA, and I told him no. Right. Um, and they kept pressing me, and I kept saying, look, here's the deal. Until I get, first of all, figured out what's wrong with me, and I get treated because I was dying, and I says, I'm not even talking to you. And I said, even then, if I get that, I'm still not going to do anything with anybody until I get compensated because I can't work anymore. That was my shocking thing when reading the Tondine report, is that the symptoms that they described from extreme electromagnetic or plasma exposure was done in the 1960s. So somebody was interested in human exposure before, you know, so there must have been- It was done before that. The, the reason why radar was developed was because the death ray was being worked on at Orford Nest. Right. And they discovered the radar. And they've been working on this since the 40s. Absolutely. But they were starting to see effects because radar was becoming widely used. So they were trying to understand it. Right. And this would be the next Agent Orange. Which right. They don't want out on top of everything else because all these people were like the two guys I was sitting next to were right. had cancer and they were pretty sure it came from the radar systems they were working on on the fire. Right. right. Just but imagine. Now, right. But that was all blacked out. So they were having trouble getting they were having trouble getting VA compensation from. The potential number of claims by U.S. service personnel exposed to radar would be enormous. That could well explain why John had delays in getting his disability claim approved. But all the time, his health was deteriorating. Hang on. At this point in the interview, I sensed that John wanted to stop telling me about him and wanted to start telling me about what he knew about how the US and the UK collaborate on secret projects. After um, the Vietnam Papers got released and all the MK Ultra with the yeah. CIA doing all that, they were shutting it all down and the American government moved it through SAP programs over to Britain. Also, because Britain also had all the tech the top technology and radars and lasers because those blue lights that we saw were yeah. probably plasmas being targeted by lasers. They were generating the phenomenon, which was, which was probably what they were hitting was the actual phenomenon, the exposure, what they created from blasting this energy field. Right. 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 And they were targeting it. So at the time though, when we were there, we were like, what the hell is this shit? We didn't know. I mean, there was not, no air. The airfield was behind us, not in front of us. And it was like, well, we've never seen her interact with oh. any stuff. So, you know, this. what else can it be? You know, it was, I never really said it was aliens. I just said. Damn. No, it's unknown. But the U.S. Air Force and the British MOD by using Randlesham would have known that the exposure, possible exposure, the possible dangers of the exposure to you and your- Yeah, well, well, that's a big question. Okay, now here's the thing. Night one, I don't know if they purposely were trying, there had been stuff going on and been seen before that. that right. If you go back and do the history, there'd been weird stuff going on for weeks before. Uh, People had seen stuff and commented on it and nobody, really did anything with it. Um, on our particular night, we got clearance to go off base because radar saw something disappear. And the shift commander, I don't know, he never, he clammed up when I challenged him when he first tried to say it was, we were making a bigger deal out of it. Um, I said, well, why did we go off base? And right. he basically shut up then because he got authorization. They contacted Eastern Radar, our RABCON and everything else. And there was something there above that came into the forest. Right. And, 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 what, what ended up happening is we went out and got close to it. I don't think normally we would never have left the base. I mean, at that night, it just was, we got clearance to go. So that's when we got close to it. Then the next night, more stuff happened. Right. And that was then by night three, they were on full. Right. Now, I don't think at the time, because I met with Williams on about three occasions, I don't think they knew what was taking place outside the gate.
John thinks what happened was man-made and points the finger at a large over-the-horizon radar facility at Orford Ness, Cobra Mist. On this aviation chart, you can clearly see that Cobra Mist lines up exactly with Woodbridge runways. That radar was plagued by problems. The Orford Ness facility was never fully functional. And strangely, the weird interference seemed to be coming from the Rendlesham Forest area. This was so mysterious that a team from Stanford University in California were called in to investigate. The Stanford investigators, known as SRI, have clearance to work on secret government projects. John told me that whatever was interfering with the Cobra Mist radar became the center of interest for the SRI team, who carried out high energy physics experiments using Orford Ness from their new headquarters in a restricted area of Bentwaters Air Force Base. SRI came in when they shut down, um, what was it, Cobra Mist? Cobra Mist. They, they, they determined that there was inland interference that was causing Cobra Mist not to work. Now, I think that's one of the reasons why they thought that the Soviets may have been doing this even, because the interesting thing was SRI stayed, and they stayed at Marlson Heath, and right. then they also, some of them were working off the base. There was oh, a classified area. There was a classified area on the flight line that no right. one could get, have access to. Right. And those were the Cobra Mist SRI people. Those were the people that came in to find out what was wrong with Cobra. He told me in messages that they were, he was down there studying the phenomenon. And on our night that we went out there, they were blasting the phenomenon with EM frequencies from Bowsey through the tunnels into the forest. Cobra Mist got turned off and canceled almost by overnight. You'd have thought that they could have fixed it. You could have thought that it would have been a longer process. And suddenly it's off, but all the people stayed. Well, not all, but some. I mean, right. it wasn't like everybody that came in, but they did keep people there and then they brought people in. And then Marconi was down there too. Right. And I don't know if you're aware of it, but it's factual that several of the scientists who were down there were working on SDI. They were working at Marlstrom Heath on SDI. And yep. um, three or four of them died mysteriously. They claimed that they were committed suicide. Uh, but right. the actual word I got was the Soviets knocked them off. Seems to me that, that there's a lot went on connecting Borsley Manor, Orford Ness, and Martlesham. That's, yes. A number of people have contacted me talking about high levels of electromagnetic radiation and plasma and they're saying it doesn't work because of the power levels required but it's certainly helpful to have a nuclear power station two miles up the coast it does work they're doing it right now in the united states they're doing it in these areas matter of fact they've, right. they've condensed the generation abilities now that they're using it in these sh those ships and the navy ships right and if you notice where the Nimitz incident happened in, I think it was the Lincoln or whatever, the one yes. off the East Coast. The one, the Nimitz was down there in Catalina Island, and they have all that equipment down there. Right. They have an energy source. Then the other one that happened in 16 was right off the coast of Florida, which right. is where they work on all the stealth technology and stuff. The radars can be manipulated, so you see things that you don't, yep. number two. And if you took a plasma and put it out there, and the fighter pilot thought it was a threat, they would fire on it it would dissipate and then the missile would come back and blow the airplane up. Right. And they can also use the plasmas to protect, put us working on a project right now to cloak the tank. Right. Where the plasmas will cloak the tank and actually the shell can go through it and not damage the tank. The problem they're having uh, is it doesn't show up, like it's supposed to go forward and then shows up somewhere else instead of when they cloak it. And they can't put a human in it. Right. Because it damn it, it'll kill a human. It's not a slow effect, it's an immediate, like what kind of happened to me. The only reason I live supposedly is because um I had two leaflets in my valve. 
Uh, right. So they both were damaged, but they, they stayed together for years. They kept me from dying almost instantaneously. Then the other guy that was with me on the third night, he got he got 100% too now. Right. He was the one that partially went into it. I went completely into it. You saw me go into it. Right. So, but again, it, there's a fine line between what we were working on and what is a UAP. Right. And how does it, what does it really do for military applications? Because that's why this is being kept secret. My impression is that this technology has now matured greatly. Mm. And, because and, of computer abilities, right. the quantum, and because they've been able to develop the energy sources. Exactly. exactly. The small enough compartmentalized to do right. it. And even in airplanes, it can ge- they can generate it. Right. I asked the DOD about that they developed a weapon off or were developing a weapon off the UAP. It's in there. And their comment back was the kitchen sink of why they couldn't tell me. They said, yes, they had, but it would foreign relations, enemy, you know, giving out information. When they did the hearing, that question was asked and right. it said that we won't comment publicly. We'll go behind closed doors. For everyone seeking answers to what might have really happened in Rendlesham Forest, this interview was an eye-opener. It ties together all the loose ends that have intrigued me for years. That a Tesla death ray was being secretly developed in the UK. How radar emerged as a parallel application. That it was Star Wars funding that opened doors to military applications for advanced physics. But the biggest mystery is what really stopped the Cobra Mist Orford Ness over the horizon radar from working. What did Stanford research discover about a strange phenomenon that seems to exist in the Rendlesham Forest area? And what were they doing in 1980 to unleash an unknown force? John Burroughs wants to make this very clear and issued this statement. Whatever I encountered, I don't believe it was man-made. I believe it was man testing our technology on a phenomenon to better understand how to use it in weaponization. We are all so privileged to hear this from John Burroughs because he was really there and he really understands the backstory to what was going on. Sadly, he and others encountered the unknown and were hurt by it. I hope John and other veterans get the settlement and healthcare they deserve and receive continuing medical support for their injuries that occurred those fateful nights in Rendlesham Forest. The truth is out there.